Hi there, I'm Trey Baker. And I'm Muhammad, and welcome to Science or Pseudoscience. Today we're going to be experimenting with divining rods. Dowsing, or divining, also known as witching, arose around the 15th century in Germany, was used to find metal underground. Later, it also came to use to find water underground, which is what we're going to be experimenting with today. Today, we'll be using our own dowsing rods made out of coat hangers, and we'll be seeing if they do actually um, find the orientation of water. So we're going to try to follow the scientific method with this, because this is a science-based channel. It will be. promise you. We're going to start with an observation. The observation is that people have been using divining rods for over 500 years, uh, and they claim to find water. The null hypothesis will be that close proximity to liquid water will not alter the position or the angle of dowsing rods placed in an unstable equilibrium. Let's go make our own rods. Okay, so let me explain unstable equilibrium. We can use the example of a ball on a hill. It's probably a good one. So, we have a ball balance it up here on the top of a hill. Uh, it's balanced, so it is in equilibrium. It doesn't want to move. However, if there's any little force exerted on it, it's going to go tumbling down the hill. Because it wants to be in a place with lower potential energy, as all things do. Materials, we have a coat hanger, which will become our dowsing rod. We got some wire cutters, which will cut that coat hanger into dowsing rods. We got this uh, needle nose plier right here. This will uh, straighten it out if we need to. We got some uh, thin gauge wire, which we are going to balance the dowsing rods on. They're going to balance between these two sticks right here. We'll just wrap it around the end here and draw it tight and have them balance. And that will be unstable equilibrium. If that thin wire is too thin, we'll just use this. This is a thicker wire. That will be good. Uh, this is what we're going to use to make uh, pretty good measurements. Uh, exact stuff here. Um, and this is going to be our control. It's a piece of clay. I'm going to turn it into two dowsing rods and uh, we'll bake them. Uh, they'll be in the same shape and length and uh, we'll bake them there. And this is a lemon because the knife gives you a lemon. And we'll bake it in that oven over there for about 15 minutes at 275 because it's super sculpy but we'll make sure it has the same dimensions using that uh, the tape measure I threw away. And bananas for potassium. You're making a lot of noise in the background <laughs> of this video. <laughs> Okay. Now that we've beaten it straight, we just cut along the middle here. Alright, do the same on the other side. There we go. Now, according to one YouTube video, needs to be about hand width, so I'll measure that out, bend it, and do the same to the other side. Bend it. Sweet. Okay. Just measure that and bend out the same on the other side. It's almost exactly 10 centimeters. Okay. So what we're doing here is we're going to make some really thin clay things. We're going to make the same dimensions as this. 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters by, uh, 30 centimeters. Why can't I? <laughs> that sounds great. That's pretty good. <laughs> Listen to those tunes. <laughs> We're gonna sauce this with water. Tell this up with water. Here is our control. The dousing rods made out of clay. They should have the same dimensions as the other rods. So. Let's go test them out. Once they're cooled down, we'll be good. Alright, so we got some divining rods made out of clay. They're, uh, pretty, pretty clay weird. Clay rods. Pretty weird. 
Let's do it. Okay. So now we have uh, two clay divining rods. They're balanced up there. And uh, a little more bendy than the metal one, but uh, we should still see some. This should still be a control. Similar dimensions. And uh, it should be inert like this. We're seeing no twitch, even with the straighter one. So, should be good. Seems to be, uh, seems to be inert, which is good for our experiment. Okay. Go hang a rod's room. Moving on to, uh, to the experimental trial. It's in the way too bright for it to. It's really hot. Do, do, do. We're testing the experimental group with the metal coat hangers and to test if it does react with the water under it. Seems the only movement is from the wind. Maybe the move the water back and forth, see if that does anything. The wind might be a confounding variable right now. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to cross over completely, like into egg shape, so maybe it's actually it's moving away. Maybe having a little head of it. Uh, yeah. I don't know. You can see, uh, if we move closely here, I do see a that there is a me. tiny bit of clay, and that's just for friction. Because the wire is too slippery. And to prove it's not being held in place. He's oh. actually going to touch it and it'll just prove, see, that it can actually move. And that can move. It oh. can. It's just choosing not to. Yes. It seems that the it's not having any effect on water. Could be possible that it's just because it's such a small amount. So we will probably check this with a larger body of water. I'm gonna try that again. Yeah. See if the cross move it back under, like right underneath it maybe. It's not doing so hot. So the intent of the clay on that wire is to have a little bit more friction. Uh, it's a little bit more comparable to having it balance on human flesh, like it is if it's uh, gripped in your hand. I think it's it's probably about the same amount of friction between the hand and uh, the clay. This is test two. We this changed the direction of it and I'm going to be sliding the water under to see if it has any change in direction. Just moving it small amounts to see if it would move in any certain position. Our end goal is to have them cross. Possible go over each other, but even if they just both intersect in the middle. Okay, well that was that run, and those are the results that we see for experiment trial two. Uh, next trial, we're gonna move to a larger body of water and see if we get any results. So we come back, after about uh, um, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, and uh, the rods are still not moved, so yeah, yeah, we'll move on, we'll move on now. Here we have uh, our control um, set near this little creek right here, and uh, it's not doing anything. What we're going to do is uh, try to set it over top of the creek. A little bit more and uh, see if that has any effect with our experimental. First we'll set up our experimental back in this position right here. Okay so we're next to this creek. I have these set up in the mud near the creek. Um, so they're not moving at all. There's actually less wind here so um, 
Maybe this is an even better experiment. We got a larger body of water. It's more natural. It's a creek bed, a little stream. Uh, so it's not doing anything over here off to the side. Uh, we're going to actually set this thing up uh, a little bit more over top of the creek and uh, see if we get any reaction out of that. Okay. All right, so this is our this is the final experimental trial. Uh, it is actually there's a running body of water directly underneath these. Uh, I could I could touch them. I don't know. Uh, I'm zooming in to show that they're not touching showing any them. signs of movement. Touching them very lightly not crossing over um, yeah well this is it this is our final experimental trial uh, yeah so we'll go on to uh, a discussion of our uh, what we've seen here we'll our maybe, results maybe hypothesize some causes for this uh, we'll talk about what we did what we could do better potentially um, so yeah, let's go on to that. So the camera died and Muhammad had to leave, so I'll simply voice over the conclusion. Our null hypothesis stated the metal dowsing rods placed in a state of unstable equilibrium would remain unchanged in position or angle if placed in close proximity to water. Our evidence seems to indicate that our hypothesis was correct, that nothing happened. Uh, this is an original experiment, not based on prior experiments. Of course, not enough trials were executed. So I'd like to ask anyone watching to recreate this themselves and or offer improvements to the design. The more people who test, the better the theory. Uh, neither of us are physics majors. I'm a biomedical engineer major. I've worked in a lab. Uh, I designed an experiment where I tested the morphological and proliferative responses of bovine endothelial cells exposed to sustained hydrostatic pressure. I got a first place award in presenting my experiment in an undergraduate competition. But I'm really looking to improve my skills with simple experiments. In the future, we'll test wooden dowsing rods, human influence over dowsing, and other potentially pseudoscientific phenomenon. Um, post your comments and suggestions, and any and all input is greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.